Thank you and good evening. Uh, uh, my name is Jens Jeppesen. I represent the Center for Democracy and Technology. We're a uh, civil society organization and, and think tank, and uh, we're committed to uh, we deal with uh, technology policy as it pertains to civil liberties and human rights issues. And uh, we have uh, we've existed for about 20 years, uh, and uh, we're now present uh, uh, here in Brussels. And our approach to technology policy and, and civil liberties is to apply uh, a significant amount of, of legal and technical uh, technological expertise to some of the some of the hard policy questions that uh, that societies are, are facing. And so, big data and analytics is is on our agenda as well, as you can imagine. Um, First off, in our thinking, it's very clear that the that there are uh, significant benefits for society, for the economy, for citizens as a whole, uh, from from what we all term big data. And and even if you if you subtract a little bit uh, uh, of uh, the hype that sometimes. Uh, uh, surrounds uh, new inventions and progress in the technology sector. Um, I have worked in the technology sector for, for, for 12 years, and, and so I, I'm familiar with the with the way with the, with the traditional uh, uh, wave of overpromise and under delivery that sometimes uh, 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 characterizes us in, in the technology sector. But but it's an, you know the the, the benefits of, uh, of 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 these new technologies and solutions are, are undeniable. Um, whether it's uh, environmental protection, whether it's uh, logistics and efficient transport, smart cities, uh, logistics, healthcare, uh, you know, I think these technologies will uh, mean reduced costs, better decision making, better resource allocation uh, in all of these areas, and that cuts across the private and public sector. So, so the benefits are undeniable, and. And, and so too are some of the changes uh, and some of the challenges that uh, that arise in, term, in, in policy uh, uh, terms. Um, some people think up scenarios in which uh, the system, for lack of a better word, uh, knows more about the individual than the in individual himself. Um, if all of the data surrounding an individual is, is uh, stored, collected, and, and available, and the uh, computing capabilities are applied to this data, you can, you can think about scenarios where, uh, where you know, that come close to uh, the minority report uh, uh, type of, uh, of, uh, of situation, if, if, you, if you remember the, the movie that came out a few years ago. The most obvious challenges that uh, big data uh, um, cause us to think about have to do with data protection. And, and there are some scholars and researchers that, uh, that, that think that big data uh, will basically overwhelm uh, the traditional concepts uh, and, and some of the basic principles of, of data protection. Uh, there's an article by Ira uh, Rubenstein from New York University um, titled Big Data, uh, The End of Privacy or a New Beginning. And he examines the way in which big data uh, challenges some of these basic principles like, like consent, uh, purpose limitation, minimization, uh, notice, and so forth. And, and it, it's, it's true that... Uh, Big data and analytics is based on the idea that um, data may be used for purposes uh, that were not even thought of when, those, when the data uh, was collected, and, and so yield new insights, uh, etc. So, of course, that creates uh, uh, that that makes it necessary so necessary to think in new ways about things like consent. Can, you can't give consent in that type of situation, and the data collector cannot give a notice. Um, and you know the purpose limitation and the minimization of data uh, is sort of uh, anathema, I I inimical to to the objectives of, of, of big data. Now, at CDT, we think uh, it's it's premature to uh, announce the death of, of privacy in the light of, of, of big data. 
it, it does pose some really difficult uh, uh, challenges. Uh, I was I was uh, giving evidence earlier today to the Civil Liberties Committee in their uh, in their inquiry uh, hearing on uh, prison and the NSA revelations, and it, it you know. I think that the NSA revelations have given us a, a very bad example of what, uh, you know, big data, uh, 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 the big data scenario can look like. Um, clearly, if citizens and consumers have to think about that, uh, you know, every, every step, every movement, every action is, is monitored and stored for you don't know how long, and by whom, and, and used for whatever purposes, then that's, that, that undermines our, uh, our ability to act as, as free citizens. Um, so that's the type of scenario that, that we should work to, uh, uh, to avoid. Now, what we are, you know, we don't have, he doesn't have the answers to, to, to these questions. We, we don't have the answers in terms of, of how do you adapt data protection uh, concepts in, 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 in this type of, of scenario. Uh, and it's not clear that anybody else has either. Um, and so our approach is to get to these answers to, to facilitate a broad discussion involving companies and, and civil society, uh, academics, uh, and experts in different areas, uh, government and policymakers, of course, um, because th this broad debate is necessary to generate an evolving consensus about the right balance between the different and sometimes competing priorities that, that need to be considered. And uh, it's clear that the challenges are similar uh, in Europe and, and the US, and I, I think it's important that, that the answers that we think about will be similar as well. So we look forward to contributing to this uh, to this debate uh, uh, going forward. And uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you.